All right, so let's, let's work on this problem. Uh, we want to determine the displacement at D, which is the free end. Uh, we have a value for I and a value for E. So ultimately, we could uh, put these values in and actually compute a numerical displacement at D. Let's, let's think about this in terms of all the different methods we've looked at. Uh, with direct integration, can we do this problem with direct integration? And if so, what would be the challenges? Well, the first thing you should ask yourself is, can I write an equation for the loading that's continuous across the whole domain? The answer is no, uh, because of this load here. So you would have a value that would go for six feet and then from six feet on to the end of the beam. That's one thing to consider. The other thing to consider is uh, the first 12 feet has a different value of I than the last uh, eight feet. So you'd end up having to break this thing up into three different intervals. As you did direct integration, each interval would generate two integration constants. You would have six constants to solve for. And you only know two things starting off. At A, you know the displacement is zero and the slope is zero. So you have a lot of work to do here. Not a good choice. Conjugate beam. What about conjugate beam? Well, what would the conjugate beam for this look like? The fixed end becomes free. The free end becomes fixed. I'm trying to find the displacement at D. So in the conjugate beam, I would just look for the moment at D. That doesn't look too bad. Except what kind of moment diagram do you expect this to be? It's got this weird kink there too, right? So yeah, it's going to be at least parabolic and finding maybe areas under that to find your shear moment in the conjugate beam, that could be a challenge. So what are we left with? Virtual work. So let's do virtual work, shall we? Thinking about virtual work, what do I need? Well, first I need to find equations for a moment for this structure. Can I do that? I think so. How many do we need for the real moment? No guesses? How about a thousand? Do we need a thousand? Is it hot or cold on a thousand? Cold. cold. How about negative a thousand? How about somewhere in between? Not zero. How about two? Right? We have one that's valid from zero to six, and then from six to 20. You see that? Now, the virtual work, what would I have? I would have a single system. All this would be removed, and I'd have a single load at D. That's easy, one equation. But I, can, I, can I integrate just two segments? No, I still have to take care of the I changing. So I'm going to end up with three segments for this, but the equation should not be crazy hard. So I think uh, virtual work is the way to go. I would encourage you maybe not to go into that much detail as you talk to yourself as in the exam, uh, but I would encourage you to think through the three or four methods that we have and see which one works best for you before you just plow in. I know as the exam gets close, the, uh, the tendency is to binge and purge. You binge up until you walk into the class memorizing, cramming stuff in, and you just feel the need to get it out. Don't do that. All right? Get a good night's sleep, eat well, have a good breakfast, have a cup of coffee, come in, ready to roll. And think through it first before you dive in. That's my advice. Anyway, enough of that. Okay, so let's solve the problem. So the first thing I want to do is find the real moments in this system. Um, if I do that, let's try to find the real moment between 0 and 6. So I'll just make an arbitrary cut here. Which side is going to be easier to handle, the left side or the right side? Now think about this. If I do the left side, which looks initially pretty simple, I'm going to need both the shear and moment to get started. That's not crazy hard. So I will do that. Uh, when I go to cut it somewhere out here, which side do you want to work, left or right? I think the right's going to be easy, easier. So let's. Um, so that's going to require that I find my reaction. So let's do that first. Now, since we're doing shear and moment, um, I'm going to assume that I have positive shear at A and a positive moment at A. 
and then to help me through my reactions, I'm going to turn this um, distributed load into a concentrated equivalent. So I know that the area under this curve, it's a rectangle, is just going to be base times height. The base is 20 feet. The height is 1.2 kips per foot. So that's what, 24 kips? That sound right? And that'll be halfway, uh, which should be 10 feet, right? That should be enough to help me get the reactions. I don't really care about the shear. I just care about the moment because I'm writing a moment equation, right? So how do I find the moment easily? I'll sum moments at A. So let's do that. I'll assume right-hand rule, and we'll sum moments at A, and we'll make sure it's in equilibrium. So about A, both these forces create what kind of moment, positive or negative? Negative. The first one is six kips. And what's its moment arm? Six feet. Then the concentrated equivalent is 24 kips. And it has a moment arm of, uh, what do we say, 10 feet, right? Is that right? I think I messed up, right? This is 12 plus 8 is 20. Half of 20 is, that's right, 10. And then I have my moment, which is also negative. So I should be able to find my moment at A. Looks like it's 240. Um, oh, I, I forgot a minus sign there. Plus 36 is 276. That sound right? Somebody check that for me? Yes. And it should be negative. So 276, and that's going to be kip feet. Okay? So now I can use that information, and let's find uh, what I'll call the real moment. So the first one will be over the first... Uh, six feet so this equation will be valid from zero to six so I'll now draw a little free body diagram of that little chunk remember we're working the left side let me uh, indicate that by drawing an arrow there and this will be at a distance X I'll have my moment which I've now found is in this direction of 276 kip feet. I'll have my distributed load which I can turn into a concentrated equivalent force. And what would that be? Well it's going to be, it's a rectangle again so it's base times height. Base is X and height is 1.2. So this should be a force of 1.2 X and then we know the distance will be half or x over 2. And then what I'm looking for is the internal moment. So the easiest way to find that is just the sum moments at this cut that we've made and make sure it's in equilibrium. And when I do that, I have the internal moment m. That's a positive moment. Uh, the 1.2 also is a positive moment. So there's the force, 1.2x. And what's the moment arm? X over 2. Don't you need the shear as well? Oh, you are so correct. Thank you. So let's go back. We've got to go back and get the shear. So let's go back and sum forces in the y direction. So let's see what I've got. I've got my shear force acting up. And then these two forces are down. So I've got minus 6 kips, minus 24 kips. So it looks like the shear at A is 30 kips. It wasn't too hard. So let's add that to the free body diagram. So now we'll need to include that. So I've got, let's see, I've got moment is positive, 1.2x times its moment arm. I've got the end moment, 
which is positive, 276, and then I have the 30 kip force, which is negative moment. What's its moment R? X. So I end up now with a moment expression. So solving for the moment, what do I get? Just move everything to the other side of the equation. Looks like I get minus 0 0.6 x squared, that's this term, plus 30x minus 276. And that should be kip feet. Now right now the only thing we can check about this moment is what? We only know the moment at A, right? Which is x equals zero. And if our equilibrium is right, we know the moment should be negative 276. So when I put in x equals zero, first term cancels, second term cancels, I'm left with negative 276. So that's, at least we're moving in the right direction. Okay, the next thing we need to do is find this moment from 6 to uh, 20. Now, we talked about before we're going to make the cut here, and we're going to look to the right side. So let me draw a free body diagram for that. So we'll have the distributed force again. and at some distance x, then how long will our segment be to the right? What should be the total length minus x should be 20 minus x. And then we'll have the internal moment there. There's the positive bending moment. And then we'll have our concentrated equivalent force which should be the area of the curve, base times height. The base is 20, x, 20 minus x. The height is, <coughs> excuse me, 1.2. So this is going to be 1.2 times 20 minus x. And the distance from the cut will be the length, 20 minus x divided by 2. So now we'll come back and we'll sum the moments at the cut make sure it's in equilibrium. So what do we have? Well, we'll start here at the moment. That's a negative moment with my sign convention. What about this moment to this force? Positive or negative? Negative, negative right? So minus the force, which is 1.2 times 20 minus x. And then the moment arm, which is 20 minus x over 2. So when I solve for the moment here, what will I get? Well, let's see. That 1.2 divided by 2 will be uh, 0 0.6 and then I'll have 20 minus x squared. Oh, I forgot. This also will have uh, units of kip feet. So there's my two moment expressions. Now I can check this one too because I know the moment. What's the moment at D? Zero. So if I put in x equal 20, you can see that zeroes it out nicely. And then the next thing you want to check is at the point they share, which is 6, do I get the same value? So somebody put in 6 for this. So I'll write over here, what is the moment when x is equal to 6 from this equation and then somebody do it down here. Uh, that'll be 14, uh, 6, 8.4? 8. 8. I don't know what it is. I'm just guessing. Oh, that's squared. I forgot to do the square. 14 squared is, I don't know what 14 squared is. I get negative 117.6. 117 for both of them? Yeah. Oh, excellent. 117.6 kip feet. So I encourage you 
before you dive into the next step to make sure that your moment equations are good. So I feel pretty good about that. So what do we do next? We have the real moments. We need the virtual moments, right? So let's do that. So let me flip the page here. And let's do the virtual problem. So what does the virtual problem look like? Now the problem wants the displacement at D. So that means I'm looking at a beam. The geometry is the same, so fixed beam of length 20. And I have a virtual load at D. I'll assume the displacement is down, so I'll assume my load is down and has a value of 1. Okay. Yeah. What was the last one? The last one direction? The last one direct integration? This is virtual work. So what, the part, what you do for virtual work is you find the real moments, which is what we did here, okay. and then you find the moments due to the virtual system. So we, we just define the virtual system. Now, this one's pretty nice because uh, how many equations do you have to write for virtual work? One. And I'll cut it here. And I'll definitely want to work the right-hand side. So my virtual, my virtual moment will be one equation that's valid for the entire length. So I'll draw my free body diagram for that. So there's the right hand segment with my virtual load. At some distance X is the cut and that leaves the beam with the remaining segment of 20 minus X, the length minus X. And then what I'm looking for internally is the virtual moment. So let's sum moments at the cut in this system and make sure they're in equilibrium. And when I do that, uh, the virtual moment, I assume the positive, is going to be negative. And do the virtual moment created by this guy about the cut is also negative. That's a value of 1 at a distance of 20 minus x. So with my virtual moment is equal to, um, I'll just leave it like this, negative 20 minus x. Does it work? What do you think the moment at x equal 20 is, the free end? should be 0, right? So I'll plug in 20 and look at that, 0. Now what do you think the moment at the fixed connection is going to be? It's probably going to be this force times the distance, or negative 20. And you see, you put an x equals 0, you get negative 20. So I'm pretty comfortable that that's working on the virtual system that I've selected. So all I'll do now is piece it together and do the integration. So the displacement at D is, remember, it's the integral over the length of the real moment, the virtual moment, divided by EI, and summed up. So let's flip back. Well, let's think about it. So we now know that we have two real equations, one from 0 to 6, the second from 6 to 20. We have one virtual equation that goes the whole length. And if E and I were constant throughout the structure, we only have two segments to deal with, right? We would integrate from 0 to 6, and then from 6 to 20. And the reason we're choosing those segments is because we have two different real moment equations. But now we have to stop at 12 because the i changes value. So we're going to have three segments. 0 to 6, 6 to 12, 12 to 20. Okay? So let's do the first segment. Um, the only thing that's constant here is, is i. I'm sorry, it's e. 
Well, actually, E and I can come out, but we've got to remember the first segment, there's going to be a 2 in there. So I'll go ahead and pull the E and I out. So when I do my first segment, which is from 0 to 6, what's the real moment from 0 to 6? It's all this thing. So i got to write that in there. So that's going to be uh, minus 0.6x. What is it? Uh, plus 30x minus 276. That's the real moment, right? And then what's the virtual moment for the same segment? Minus 20 minus x. You see that? So I'll put the minus in front. I'll put the 20 minus x. And then the whole thing is divided by 2. Everybody see that? So here, the real moment from 0 to 6, the virtual moment from 0 to 6, the minus sign way out in front comes from here. And then the 2 comes because this first segment actually from 0 to 12 is divided by 2i and only factored out an i. Okay? You're staring at that like it's magic. Did, you say, did, you say did I do it okay? Can you say that last part you about 2? Well, remember, um, from 0 to 12, it's 2i instead of i. Oh, okay. So when I factor out an i, there's the 2 for the first segment. So what would the next length be? Well, what changes from 6 to 12? The real moment. And what was the real moment again? Uh, it was this. Minus 0 0.6, 20 minus x squared. Was that a negative in front of that? It was. So the next integral from 6 to 12, the real moment is 0 0.6 Oh, I put it in the wrong side. I guess it won't matter. Um, I messed up that. Let's see, it's 20 minus x squared. That's the real moment. What's the virtual moment? That again. So that those signs cancel, and I get 20 minus x. So you can see, oops, there's a minus there. So that's going to be 20 minus x cubed when we're all done. So there's the real moment. There's the virtual moment. And then I need to divide by 2 because I'm still in the segment where the moment of inertia is twice as big. What's next? Well, now we have to finish up. We've got to go from 12 to 8. So the last integral, or the last segment of the integration, is from 12 to 20. And what's the real moment? Well, it's, still, it's still the second one and the virtual moment is still the same so the numerator here is going to look exactly the same except the denominator is 1 so I'll, re I'll just write that as 0 0.6 20 minus x squared that's the real moment there is a minus sign there but that will cancel with this minus sign and we'll have 20 minus x again from the virtual moment and then you can close all that up. See how easy that is? Now just mo integrate and evaluate. And there's a long rope hanging off the side of our building. What is that? Is someone rappelling down the side? It's a water hose. That's even stranger. Why is there a water hose dangling outside of our window? They want to bring us up. They want us up. That's interesting. A little segue. A little break in the uh, action. So, for me, if you're doing this on the exam, you know, full stop, you're done. When you're at home or you're staring at the Mastering Engineering page, you've only just begun. Because now you've got to multiply all this stuff out, which is not crazy hard, but does take some time. Especially this guy right here, 20 minus x cubed. Holy cow. And then you've got to do the integrations and do the evaluations right and sum all that up and get one number. So this is good enough for me.
So I'll stop here. So questions? Is the reason why for the virtual load that, that one point load is at D is the displacement at D? That's exactly right. Okay. So you always put the virtual load at the point you want the displacement and then you assume a direction. I just assume down. So hopefully when all this is done, I should get a positive number which means I assume the right direction, which really means I have negative displacement. But um, okay, I follow all the way up to this last little piece. So this last piece is basically, basically going from 12 to 20. And so right, so this piece from 12 to 20, mm -hmm. I I have to use the real moment from the that's valid from 12 to 20, right? And this, this was my real moment that's valid from 12 to 20. And then in this particular problem, our virtual moment is valid at every segment. So you'll always notice the virtual moment is unchanged. So maybe what I'll do is, um, like for this one in particular, I'll just remind you that this is the real moment and this is the virtual moment for that section. The same thing here. There's the real moment. There's the virtual moment. The two comes from here. And in the first segment, this is the one where the real moment, I guess, was a little more complicated. And in the last segment, as you can see in this problem, the virtual moment is the same for all segments. So this is uh, an example that shows how you have to break up the integration to handle the different moments and also uh, any kind of change in the properties or the strings. Okay? So any questions? I may find where I actually did this. I wouldn't do this by hand, by the way. I'm lazy. I get out MathCAD or something like that and let it do it for me. Uh, I'm, I'm very prone to when I expand this thing to make a mistake and then you have to evaluate it at two things and subtract it and it's just a big mess. I know, I know I can do it, but I don't want to. I'd rather have a machine do it for me. I'd also like to have a machine, you know, vacuum the house and feed me and do my job and, you know, just let me hang out in the yard. I'll be good. So any other questions? Oh, Mr. Brown. So how did you get the moment from 12 to, or from 6 to 12? I didn't see it on the previous page. Did you just integrate? I did. See, I've got one moment from 0 to 6, and then I've got another moment that's valid from 6 to 20. Uh -huh. So that's the moment. So this, this moment gets used in the segment 6 to 12 and 12 to 20. The re only reason we had to break it up and we couldn't go from 6 to 20 was right here at C, the property changed. Okay? I'll flip back and let the last image be the, uh, the result. I think that's in pretty good shape. All right.